Welcome to the video guys, it's Elsake and today we're gonna take the things one step further. In the previous video, if you haven't watched it by the way, you can find it right here on the top right corner. We did a simple Discord CTO using Python and we compiled it using Nukta so it runs natively on any Windows PC there. It was working fine, the commands were issued successfully, but we faced a few limitations. First one is being that annoying pop-up that was present when you start the application, and the second was the tremendous huge file size, which is like 60 plus megabytes. But the good thing was that it was successfully working and it was successfully bypassing any kind of firewalls and we tested against Windows Defender, we successfully bypassed that, that as well. Now in that video, the idea is simple, we can try to work around with these limitations, I'm gonna walk you through my steps and techniques, what I have did, what I have tried, what failed and why, and then just see the result. So take a nice seat and enjoy. So the first thing that came to my mind is why not to search for alternative programming languages to build the bot upon. So the Python was working fine, but as you can see, the file was tremendously huge. That's because it stripped all the libraries from Discord into compiling a single executable. And after a little bit of searching, I stumbled across .NET Core with the library Discord.NET and then NIM guys with the library DIMSCORD. Yes, you can build Discord bots with NIM. So let's discuss these two options and why they failed at the end. Now let's analyze what happens with Discord.net. So it is easy to set up, it works nice, but the idea is there, we need to stick up with .NET Core instead of .NET Framework. The issue here is that not all Windows PCs are supporting .NET Core by default, so you need to either include your DLL with the executable you generate, or you need to compile a standalone file, which guess what? Wraps all the libraries together and creates a tremendously huge file size, so we have pretty much the same problem, and that's why this option is useless. Now, let's get back to NIM where things became more interesting. Now, to be honest, NIM looked like the perfect candidate for the job. The Discord library was easy to install, easy to set up, and easy to work with. On top of that, the file size was small, perfectly suited for our needs. NIM had one general problem, and that's the SSL support. So since it's using Discord, and Discord works with its own webhooks over SSL, which is nice, and even though it helps the C2 itself, we must compile the binary with the flag dash D and SSL, saying that we we must interact with SSL with that executable there. It's all good, but when you transfer that to a targeted machine, it no longer works because you need to carry out a bunch of DLLs and your certificate to make everything work just fine. I was trying to research a way to bypass that, to embed everything together, but so far I was not able to do it and thus stopped my progress tremendously. Now, let's discuss a few things I did a few things I tried, and then what I made a little bit to work. So let's go. So I sat there, talked for a while, and decided to try with Donut. If you don't know, guys, Donut is a tool for generating shellcode. Pretty much you pass executable and it can generate shellcode with that. There's also another library, another project called Donut Test, which can uh, perform process injection and it works really nice. So I really hands up to these guys and to this project, it's amazing. And my idea was to get that initial main.txe compiled from Victor with the Python from the initial code and have that as a shell code and then embed in a shell code runner with some kind of a process, explore, uh, process injector like a donut test and so on. But obviously it did not work and that's because the file size was so big and the shell code was so huge that what was succeeding the, the, the lengths, the maximum lengths allowed from the programming language itself. So that option failed. Then I decided to go for a different approach and host that thing on SMB server as we did in previous videos. Now I know that's not the most suitable things there, but that's the one that ended up working. So I created a C file called test.c, which includes stdr.h and windows.h, and then use just one method, which is the main, and that syntax here, my window, get console window, and show window are Windows APIs for working with that active window there. And when that pretty much is done, the show window is hide, it hides the window. So, for example, if I were to type a, a simple printf here, like that, let's do printf sd, and let's remove that, compile and run. We can see it's all nice, and when I paste that, the window is gone as soon as it starts. 
Now, since it's a printf, it automatically returns a value, but if we somehow hold it, like with that, it remains hidden in a separate process. Now, I know that's not perfect. I know there's a lot of room to improve, but so far, that ended up working. So I store my file on SMB shell, on my carry box right here. And now here, I'm going to type in packet SMB server, like that. And we are done. It's hosted. And now here on, on that Windows 10 client, I'm going to transfer the C file. What that's doing is invoking system commands. It's going to read the file from that chair and it's just going it to execute it. That's the whole point of it. Execute the remote file. So it's not start locally. Now let's compile that and see how that works. So compile. And we have a file called test.exe right there. Now if I run it, nothing happened. But if we were to go to task manager and trace back test.exe, we, we see that it's been running. And if I were to go to Discord and now type commands, we see it works. So what happened? Because in the previous example, we saw that command was running twice. I forgot that that test.exe was running on the background. So that's why we had two commands. Now to remove it, let's uh, get rid of all the mains and tests so we see there. So where is it? Maybe I killed it. Yep, I did. So how? Not sure how. Now let's just copy it and translate it to Windows 10 uh, victim box and see how it behaves. So copy test.exe. Let me just be sure it's the right one. Yeah. Now go to here, paste it, and let's go to CD. We're over it into desktop and run test.exe. So the PowerShell screen immediately disappeared because it spawned the process and subprocess of the, of the PowerShell. So the Windows APIs function applied to the parent process as well. And now if we run the task manager and search for test, we see it's already there and running. Now if I go to commando and just want to verify how that works, I'm going to type who am I. We can see it's working pretty nice. On the server side, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of SMP requests, as you can see here. And that's because, like, actually, we have two SMP requests. And that's because we initially need to create SMP requests, pass the hash here, authenticate, and then run the executable. Then it stores a session. And after that, that session expires, another SMP request can be done. So, for example, if I remove that, the, the server should still work. So, if I do who am I? You see, it still works, but when the session is done or I need to run that executable again, then I'm going to need to set up another SMB server there. So that's the solution I came up with. I know there's a, a lot of room to improve. And if you guys have any idea of how to make things better, I'm down for your suggestion. Just shoot me up with your best ideas. And that's about it. That's how we overcome these issues. And now you can see it's worked nice better from the previous time and we can see that file is like 130 kilobytes which is slightly less than 40 megabytes now this can be done with download this can be injected in different process and since it's working it's it's even way easier so i know there's again a lot of room to improve but i think we did pretty good work so i hope you enjoyed learn something new and i'll see you guys in the next one